Welcome to Echo 102, Study Session 5, Government and the Economy. Introduction. Government affects economic activities through its spending and revenue decisions. In this study session, we'll examine various classes of government spending and the reasons for such spending. We will assume that government is not a producing agent and does. It is important to examine how government finances its spending outlay. We will examine the various sources of government revenue. It will also be important to examine what happens when government spending is higher than government revenue. The study session will end by looking at various fiscal policy instruments that government can use to control economic activity. When you have studied this session, you should be able to identify the different forms of government spending, discuss how government revenue are generated, describe how government revenue and expenditure activities affect aggregate demand. Government spending. Government spending is the spending activities carried out by the government of the country. There are essential services that government provides. These include national defense, provision of education, health, public roads, policing, internal and external securities, and possibly provision of social security, unemployment benefit, pension schemes, and so on. These set of government spending can be categorized into two. Government consumption spending expenditure on goods and services. This takes the form of the expenditure on public health, public education, street light, public roads, and purchases of materials for public office use, purchase of labor services, and so on. Transfer payment. Transfer payments are government expenditure that is not made in return for currently produce goods and services. If government makes a payment to old age pensioner or pays pensioners gratuity, the government is not purchasing any currently produced goods and services from the retired people. The payment itself adds neither to the employment nor total output. Other examples of transfer include unemployment benefit, student grants and interest paid on the national debt. Government spending is spelled out in the budget and so it is assumed to be predetermined. This means that government expenditure spending is autonomous. Government revenue. How does the government finance its predetermined expenditure? Of course, from the revenue it can generate. The source of government revenue are A. Sales of government bonds or treasury bills B. Borrowing from the rest of the world C. Taxes Government can source for fund through the sales of government security called treasury bills. Government sells the treasury bills to the private individuals who have more than enough money to hold. Thus, they buy government securities and pay with cash. Government can also decide to raise funds by borrowing from international institutions such as the African Development Bank, International Monetary Fund, World Bank, and so on. Finally, government can generate revenue by imposing taxes. Taxes can be direct or indirect. Indirect taxes are taxes that do not depend on level of income. Such taxes include tariff, poll tax, sales tax, and value added tax. These types of tax can also be called lump sum tax. Direct taxes are taxes levied on the level of income. These can be categorized into three, namely proportional tax, progressive tax, and regressive tax. Proportional tax is a flat rate tax which is paid by every worker. It is a share of one's income that must be set aside as tax. 
the higher one's income, the greater the tax paid. Progressive tax, on the other hand, is a system where the rate of tax itself depends on the income earned. In this case, rate of tax is no more the same across income category. In fact, the higher the income, the higher the tax rate. Discussion about the appropriate tax is to adopt is beyond the scope of this study. However, it is useful to have this basic understanding of what distinguishes them. In terms of modeling the economy, knowing the position of tax function in the demand for consumption should allow a straightforward incorporation of any form of tax function. In the case of Nigeria, it is reasonable to incorporate both lump sum tax and proportional tax in the tax function because government generates revenue from lump sum tax and proportional tax. Balanced budget. The budget is a document that explicitly describes the spending decision of government vis-a-vis -vis the projected revenue and the source. Budget balance is the difference between the total government expenditure, that is tax minus government expenditure. If government expenditure is denoted by G and government revenue by T, then budget balance can be written as T equals G or T minus G equals zero. In some cases, Revenue may be greater than expenditure, in which case the government is running budget surplus. If government owns some debt, it can reduce the debt by the surplus. In another case, expenditure may be greater than revenue. This implies that government intends to spend more than it can generate as revenue. The case where the government expenditure is greater than revenue is called a case of budget deficit. This implies that the government must add to the national debt since it must borrow to cover its deficit with sales of government bonds discussed earlier. Revenue and expenditure function. Government expenditure is treated as autonomous because it is assumed that government has decided on how it wishes to spend and hold to these plans whatever the level of income. Tax rate, in some sense, is also autonomous because government sets its tax rate and does not vary them as GDP varies. Thus, tax revenue is endogenous. As GDP rises with given tax rate, the tax revenue will rise. The other part of tax function is purely exogenous. The table one below indicates that government ran budget deficit in the first two rounds of income, after which it began to run budget surplus. Fiscal policy and aggregate demand. Canadian economic model states that recession occurs as a result of low spending brought about by low income. Hence, to fight recession that is caused by low demand, government should find ways of reducing or even eliminating this recession. Policies that are used to affect aggregate demand with the objective of eliminating output gaps are called stabilization policies. There are two types of stabilization policies, monetary policies and fiscal policies. Monetary policy has been dealt with earlier. Fiscal policies refer to decisions about the government budget. The fiscal policy instrument used by the government to stabilize the economy are government expenditure policy and government tax policy. Keynes argued that changes in government spending were probably the most effective instrument of upsetting recession. According to him, government purchases of goods and services are a component of aggregate demand. 
So aggregate demand is directly affected by changes in government purchases. In the case of output gap, recession or depression, where there is too much aggregate demand or too little aggregate demand, the government can be helpful in reducing or filling the gap. For simplicity, let us assume that aggregate demand function is given by AD equals C plus I plus G, where C, I and G are planned private consumption, planned private investment and planned government expenditure. Let G equals 300, T equals 250. Also let C equals 620.0 plus 0.8YD, where YD is disposable income. I equals 250, where YD is after tax disposable income. This implies that YD equals Y minus tax. Substituting all this information into AD function, we have AD equals 620 plus 0 0.8 YD plus 250 plus 300. YD equals Y minus T. Therefore, AD equals 620 plus 0 0.8, then bracket Y minus 250 plus 220 plus 300. 620 plus 0.8Y minus 200 plus 220 plus 300. AD equals 940 plus 0.8Y. This is what is called aggregate demand function. According to the short run equilibrium output, aggregate demand equals income. Thus, we have y equals 940 plus 0.8y. y minus 0.8y equals 940. y then bracket 1 minus 0.8 equals 940. Divide both sides by 1 minus 0.8 which is 0.2 so 0.2 y equals 940 y equals 940 divided by 0.2 which is equal to 4700 what this implies is that for the economy to be at equilibrium planned aggregate expenditure must equal aggregate output to income the equilibrium output can be graphically plotted as follows to appreciate the importance of government spending, assuming that private consumption dropped by 10 units. So the new specification becomes AD equals C plus I plus G. I equals 220, T equals 250, C equals 610 plus 0.8, G equals 300. Substituting for each of the four components into the aggregate demand function, AD equals 610 plus 0.8 Y minus 200 plus 220 plus 300, which equals 830 plus 0.8 Y. Since AD equals Y, then we have Y equals 850 plus 0.8 Y. Collect like terms, then we have Y minus 0.8 Y equals 830, which will give us. 0.2y equals 830. Divide both sides by 0.2, we have y equals 830 over 0.2, which gives us 4,150. Due to consumer willingness to reduce consumption by 10 units, equilibrium aggregate demand fell by 550. We conclude that the fall in consumer spending has led to recession. This is shown graphically above. Now let government intervene by increasing its expenditure by 10 so that G equals 310. As before, the first step is to write the relationship between aggregate demand and output Y. AD equals C plus I plus G. Trailing the steps given earlier, AD equals 610 plus 
0.8 then bracket y minus 4 minus 250 bracket close plus 220 plus 310 which gives us 940 plus 0.8y since a d equals y then y equals 4700 this value is the same as the assumed potential output thus in this simple example the increase in government purchases eliminate the necessary output gap this simply this simple example shows that through changes in government expenditure which is one of the fiscal policy instruments of government output gap can be affected through its policy government also defines the level of tax collection and transfer payment from the Keynesian's point of view changes in the level of tax or transfer can be used to affect aggregate demand and thus to reduce or eliminate output gap. Meanwhile, the effect of tax policy on aggregate demand is indirect. Changes in taxes affect aggregate demand by first of all changing private disposable income. For instance, a reduction in tax or an increase in transfer payment will increase disposable income. What this turns out to mean is that more money is available for consumption by private sector. It does appear that changes in taxes and transfer will affect aggregate output to the extent that consumers private sector change the level of spending. Let us continue to use our earlier example to demonstrate how tax cut or increase in transfer payment can be used to reduce or eliminate output gap. Assume that government decides not to increase expenditure to close the gap created by the reduction in private consumption of 10 units. Suppose that fiscal policymakers decide to restore potential aggregate demand by changing the level of tax collection. Note that reduction in tax by 10 units cannot fully eliminate the gap as it does for government expenditure. This is so because if tax is reduced by 10% or 10 units, only 8 units will be spent. Since the marginal propensity to consume MPC is 0.8. So consumption spending increases by only 0.8 times the amount of the tax cost. To eliminate the output gap completely, tax has to be reduced by 12.5 units so that the new tax regime is 237.5 hours. To get the value, we we'll divide 10, the unit by which aggregate demand is reduced by 0.8, that is the MPC. The answer we get is 12.5, is the amount by which tax must be reduced. We can then write out a new consumption function as follows, C equals 610 plus 0.8 then bracket y minus 23.75 using the values of i and g aggregate demand function becomes ad equals 610 plus 0.8 then bracket y minus 237.5 plus 220 plus 300 ad equals 940 plus 0.8y then y will give us 4,700, which gives the potential output. We therefore conclude that a tax cut of 12.5 will eliminate the necessary gap and restore full employment in this example. Thus far, we have demonstrated that fiscal policy affects economic activities. When the economy is in recession, government fiscal policy can be used to help the economy out of recession. Conversely, if the economy is perceived to be very strong, when aggregate demand appears to be greater than full employment output, fiscal policy can be used to reverse the situation.
However, it must be noted that practically this does not produce immediate results as demonstrated in our example. One significant reason for this is that in true life situation, changes in fiscal policy go through a lengthy legislative process. What must be understood here is that fiscal policy makers can use any of the instruments discussed to change economic activities. Summary. In this study session, we highlighted different forms of government spending. We also discussed how government revenue are generated and how government revenue and expenditure activities affect aggregate demand. This is the end of study session 5. Thanks for listening.